If you're a fan of all things video games, I'm sure you're familiar with games not getting localized or games that have taken a long time to come to the rest of the world. Games like Xenoblade Chronicles X took roughly 8 months to come to the rest of the world outside of Japan, games like Mother 3 still haven't been released around the world and that came out in 2006, and just recently a game like Persona 5 Scramble only just got its Western release confirmed after 8 months of silence and any sort of confirmation. However, if you're a part of the JoJo fandom, then I think you may be pretty familiar with localization troubles. Whether it's stand names like Sticky Fingers or Bad Company, the JoJo series has always had its fair share of changes made to the series because of things like copyright. However, one game stands in infamy in the fandom as being one that has still never been brought over and was never confirmed why it wasn't, even though it made multiple appearances and even had a confirmation of an English release. That game was 2002's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, basing itself off of the story of Part 5, Golden Wind. But why was this the case? Why was this game even brought to the rest of the world? But first of all, for those who don't know, what is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Well, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is a Japanese manga series that is both wrote and illustrated by series creator Hirohiko Araki the series starting in 1987 under the first part, Phantom Blood, and has carried on throughout many years even to this day, with the series currently on part 8. Each story arc, or part in the series' case, sees our protagonist, who's usually nicknamed Jojo for one reason or another, fighting one if not many villains alongside friends and even family in some cases. The series has currently 8 parts in this order, Phantom Blood, Battle Tendency, Stardust Crusaders, Diamond is Unbreakable, Golden Wind, Stone Ocean, Steel Ball Run, and currently Jojolian. The series is extremely successful, selling over 100 million printed copies to date, making it one of the best-selling manga series in history. Of course, with any successful media, you'd have your fair share of new content. This has ranged from a 13-episode OVA going over Stardust Crusaders, the third part in the series, and a film adaptation of the first part, Phantom Blood. Of course, as well, there's also the incredibly popular and extremely good adaptation by David Productions, who have currently adapted parts 1 through 5, and are currently finishing up the dub for part 5. And of course, with any successful media, you have video games, which is where this topic leads for today. Now, when it comes to JoJo video game adaptations, there were quite a few up until the game we're talking about today, like an RPG in 1993 by Cobra Team, which was... <laughs> Alright, as well as a pretty popular and honestly pretty fun fighting game by Capcom in 1998 called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which was released on the PlayStation. However, a year later, the game got an updated re-release with the subtitle Heritage for the Future and was released on the Dreamcast. Overall, the games had gotten fairly okay to positive reception overall, and the train didn't stop coming when it came to JoJo getting game adaptations. In 2002, Capcom, the same developers of the JoJo fighting game, officially announced a new action adventure game based off of Part 5, this being called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind. At that point, things seemed to be going smoothly for the game, with Capcom even announcing a North American and European version of the game in May 2002 at the E3 Expo for that year. Fun little tidbit, the name itself was actually changed for the European release, with the JoJo being different with JoJo replacing it. This change actually came at the request of Araki himself, who said that he wanted to change it to Italian spelling to stay true to the main character, being Giorno Giovanna, since Part 5 takes place all across Italy. The game's North American and European releases were confirmed to be released on October of 2002. The game had released on July 25th, 2002 in Japan to fairly positive to mixed reception. However, overall, it had gotten a fairly solid reception from fans and critics, and production on the localized release appeared to be going smoothly. It was even playable at Sony's PlayStation Experience Expo in August of 2002, for the whole public to play. So, what could go wrong? Like I had said prior, the game's localized releases were originally planned for October 2002, However, it was then announced to be delayed to December of 2002, and then it was confirmed to be getting delayed again to February 2003. However, by the time May 14th rolled around, E3 2003 had been reaching closer and there was no sign of the game at all. Capcom's E3 2003 lineup had been shut off as well, and even though games like Animusha 3, Mega Man X7, and many more were revealed to make an appearance, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure was not. I think you can see how the story goes at this point. 2003 goes by, and the game was never released in the West at all. And in fact, neither Capcom nor Araki have ever mentioned why the game was never released outside of Japan, even with the game being playable to the public multiple times. To this day, there has been no official translation or localization of the game at all, and there has been no official reason as to why this game never came to the rest of the world. However, in 2018, an official fan translation of the game was released, kind of getting a similar situation to Mother 3 actually, which also had seen a massive fan translation. Now, with no official reason as to why this was the case, let's speculate for a minute here. Why was this game never brought to the rest of the world? I mean, games like Heritage for the Future were fine, and even the Stardust Crusaders RPG, but why not this? Well, the most widely assumed reason is actually a pretty common one amongst JoJo fans. Copyright or trademark infringement. For those who don't know, let me explain. JoJo, literally since the very start, has had quite its fair share of references, whether it's musical or even referencing a real-life person. For example, stands like Moody Blues, Sticky Fingers, Aerosmith, Crazy Diamond, Golden Experience, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and many, many more had referenced either artists, bands, or music pieces throughout their names. But there are also characters that are named after actors or musicians in real life. Characters like Enya, Dio Brando, Robert E.O. Speedwagon, Boingo and Boingo, things like that. 
quite a few of these were changed in some way for localization, with Crazy Diamond being changed to Shining Diamond, Aerosmith being Lil Bomber, Sticky Fingers being changed to Zipper Man, and even characters like Enya being changed to Enyaba, or Oingo and Boingo to Zenyata and Mondata. You see where I'm getting at with this, right? The main accepted reason as to why this game was never brought over were copyright concerns. Like I mentioned prior, multiple stands in Part 5 were named after some sort of music reference. Bujarati's stand is named Sticky Fingers, Naranches is Aerosmith, Mistas is Sex Pistols, Jornos is Golden Experience, Abakios is Moody Blues, so on and so forth. It's widely accepted that Capcom was simply heavily concerned over the possibility of a lawsuit on their hands when it came to these names. But really, that's simply what was widely expected. Really, we may never know the reason as to why this was the case, which is a damn shame. This as well was the last JoJo game made by Capcom, at least at the moment. Looking at footage of the game for this video, the game honestly looked like it could have been a lot of fun, and while not anything amazing, I think it would have been a solid way for JoJo fans to actually play through part 5 of the series instead of just watching or reading it, though not a great way to experience it for the first time. It's upsetting that this game never saw the light of day worldwide, but thankfully this didn't stop the train of solid JoJo games. Four years after the aforementioned game released in Japan, a new game was made by Bandai Namco and developers Anchor Inc. that was a beat-em-up that went over the events of part 1's Phantom Blood. The game itself was actually pretty similar to the Golden Wind game too. However, upsettingly, this shared a similar fate to the Golden Wind game, as it was never released outside of Japan. Though, in all honesty, I couldn't find an exact reason why, not even any speculation from fans either. I'm not sure if that's just due to the fact that it didn't get much attention, or that it wasn't ever confirmed to come over here. It wasn't until 2013 when JoJo finally had another brand new game announced, that game being JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle, developed once again by Bandai Namco and was actually a fighting game released for the PS3 on August 29th, 2013 in Japan, April 25th, 2014 for the European and Asian countries, and finally April 29th, 2014 for North America. There was also another fighting game developed by Bandai called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Eyes of Heaven, releasing on the PS3 and PS4. Both of these games featured a wide array of characters from all parts, and even though some names were changed, they were both pretty solid games and were even better if you were a JoJo fan with all the references and those awesome supers. There were three more games after that, at least released currently. There was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond Records and JoJo's Pitter Patter Pop, both being mobile games and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Last Survivor in 2019, once again done by Bandai and was actually a battle royale game. It's great to see that, even though the Golden Wind game never did see the light of day, that JoJo in the form of video games are still extremely strong, and some that even a friend of mine and I still play whenever we visit each other. But we'll have to wait and see what the future is going to bring when it comes to JoJo and video games. The series is still going strong, and I for one, can't wait to see what the future of the series may bring. So, I have a question for all of you. Do you have some sort of dream JoJo game that you can think of? Let me know. Down below. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great night. Signing off. Peace out, soldiers.